What's up guys, it's Rosalyn here, and today I'll be showing you an updated build for the unkillable hunter and I can't send you more precise for you to use in Destiny 2 right now. So let's get into it. So what this build primarily is based around is combination blow and you dodging a lot and then combination blow again as combination blow is what your melee ability is and with combination blow it allows you to get health back which is very nice but if you pair this with assassin's cow it makes this even more stronger as you get health back from melee kills as well when theoretically when you get a melee kill with combination blow plus assassin's cow you'll get full health and the added bonus you become invisible which is really nice for your end game content and all of the stuff as enemies won't be targeted to you you can get allies up and all that now to pair this build we'll need some weapons now what we think would be good for this is a 1-2 punch shotgun because 1-2 punch with this build is really nice and just makes you do more damage. Um, you can use any 1-2 punch shotgun. Um, the easiest one for me I got was obviously Ragnarok D as it's got 1-2 punch on it and also a holster which is really nice. Or the... I forgot what the game it is. Uh, the shotgun from There's a Tenancy, that one. You can craft that one, and that has one two punch shotgun on it as well. And something I've been added to this build, because um, heavies doesn't really matter, because you will be punching a lot, uh, a tractor cannon. As a tractor cannon is really nice for this, so wear that, as you can basically suppress enemies and let you do more damage to them. So even more damage you can pop up, which is ridiculous for this build. I tell you that. And obviously for the energy slot, it that could be anything. This could be where your one-two punch shotgun hit is here. As for this season, you can get the last man standing. That can get one-two punch on it. So realistically, you need at least one. Your shotguns have one-two punch on them to make this build worthwhile. Now for the uh, subclass, the main bread and butter of this build. What makes this really good is two aspects i'm going to tell you plus it to be in a dodge target makes you amplified while you're amplified your dodge recharge more quickly and you're more resilient while dodging and your load speed is greatly increased just really nice overall and just really good and the main the bread and butter of this build lethal current after dodging, your next melee attack has increased lung range, jolts, target, and creates a damaging aftershock. Damaging any jolted targets with melee attacks also blind them, which is just ridiculous. And for end game content, this just makes it just dumb. Literally just dumb. So, yeah. So, why are we here? So, with the melee bit, the only one really. Um, you want to use is combination blow. You don't want to be using distortioning blow, it's just not great. Combination blow is where you do your damage, as this, as every time you get a kill with it, um, it does get you get stuck combination blow, you get another kill, you again, and the other kill, you know, just drops for free. And yeah, combination blow is just really good, and it's like say, doing targets with this ability also fully reveals your class ability energy, so. You get kill, dodge, kill, dodge, kill, dodge, etc, etc. And you get a small amount of health back as well. That's what I mean about this pairing well with Assassin's Cow. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. So you increase your melee damage and defeating targets. And this stacks three times, like I say. Which is quite nice. And for nades, pulse nade, just really nice. Triple jump, because it's best. And you want to be using gamblers dodge, because you're dodging with your melee abilities to so get that back. There's no other, there's no reason why to use bats and dodge as it just doesn't synchronize. Syn synchronize? Yeah, synchronize with this build. 
So yeah. And the super will be Gavin Storm. Arguably one of Hunter's best supers. So there's no point using Alex Axe's rubbish. Gavin Storm, just pure damage and really good as well for ad clear as well. Now, for the fragments, um, this has changed since the last build of this Arc Hunter. So, the first one is Spark of Pace. You have greatly increased resilience, recovery, and mobility by your sprinting. So, obviously, you'll be running around a lot with this build, so just a nice overall, and it becomes, makes you more less prone to die. And when you invisibly just run out, just really good for that. Smack feedback, taking melee damage briefly increases your outgoing melee damage and plus 10 resilience. This is just nice overall. Makes you do more damage. If you're close quarters, you are bound to get melee, so you're able to get more damage. And especially if you're doing solo dungeons and then you have a melee attack, this would just nice because you do more damage with that. So, really good for that. Now, Spark of Assistance. While surrounded by commands, you are more si resistant to incoming damage. So obviously, with this, you're getting more into enemies. They're probably like 20 of 10 enemies, probably. I don't know what you're doing these days. Um, so yeah, you get less, more resilience to it. So you basically get resistance, resistance, and obviously plus 10 strength, which is nice. And spark of magnitude. You're lingering art grenades, so pulse grenades, storm grenades, have the same duration, just more damage overall, which is just overall nice, and yeah, the reason why I'm using pulse grenades in the first place. Now, for the mods for this build, the mods I do use are the following ones. For the helmet, um, main ones, two hands on, which is just really nice, as you get your super really quick. So, if I'm spam it a lot, there you go. Heavy ammo finder, makes sense, just get heavy heavy ammo back a lot quicker. Just increases the chance of you dropping one. So yeah. The gauntlets, impact induction, causes damage with a melee attack, reduce your grenade cooldown, so get your grenade back faster. Heavy handed, just spawn a shit ton of lobs, which is just great for your teammates. So yeah. And focusing strike grants cost ability energy when you cause damage with a melee attack. Just nice if for some reason your if your uh, melee ability is down and your class ability is down because it can happen sometimes. So this is just nice. You just punch it and get it back quickly. Just nice for your chest piece. Um, I've gone with. Uh, harmonic resistance, which is obviously arc, so I'm great for that. If you have, I didn't have enough points to put arc on, so hence why I got that one on. Boy resistance, just great overall. Uh, immediately damage resistance, this is nice as you go in immediately, get into melee distance a lot, so it's just helpful for that. And with a lot of content being arc and void now these days, it is, these two are quite hand hand pretty good to use. Now, for the boots are gone with two surges. This can be any type of weapon surges you use, so it's choose this pick really. Uh, in innovation, obviously you need spamming and killing stuff with your orbs, with your melee ability. With innovation, it reduces the grenade cooldown a lot, so this just works hand in hand. You get your grenades a lot faster, you can just spam the hell out of that, which is really nice. Class ability for the class. Items, shall I say. Two time dilations and a bomber. You can have two bombers and one time dilation. This is just what people want. Just choose a choice, realistically. But I've gone with this as this is really good and just great overall. Now, for the artifacts, I've unlocked all of the artifacts for the season. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but the ones you want to be looking out for are. I don't know why I didn't have that one. <laughs> Electrical Warrior, stay amplified longer while your Arc Subclass is equipped. Uh, Thunderous re Retreat, grants bonus Arc Super Damage if cast while critically wounded or while amplified. Lasts until the end of the Super Activation. Just nice. 
amps up, gain damage resistance while amplified. That's what I should have done. Uh, and this one I need to get out of the buzz while you amplify some of the better lightning that damage damages and dots targets. This one needed for that. And yeah. And any other ones? Oh, this one. After throwing out, can I gain increased grenade recharge or, sh or short time? I found those at a certain duration. This is just nice overall, so yeah. Yeah. But yeah, for the main ones, for the artifacts, you want to be going for electrical armor, thunderous retreat, amped up, shock and awe, and obviously lightning strikes twice. But that's just something to change. You can choose what you want, but I say you are these ones season but yeah that's the build for the hunters and what they can do all the output is ridiculous and you'll probably see the background gameplay of just me just basically not dying and yeah it's just ridiculous so use the build now and go slay some hive or whatever you want or the new dungeon as this does quite well the dungeon um, you might have to tweak all that stuff as well, as if you want to put the most output for damage, you're best off doing like swapping to Light's Handshake, which is nice, with an Arbalus, because obviously the shields right now, for the new dungeon bosses, Arbalus can just strip them easily, but if you just want safety net, just keep your Assassin's Cow with these weapons on, you can do that as well, so it's all up to you. But other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I see you guys next time.